electricity is recognized as a low carbon fuel, uh, reduces uh, compared to the baseline, which is gasoline, by about 60%. Uh, so what the providers of electric uh, infrastructure can do, they can monetize uh, those sales and then sell them to the regulated parties. They can actually sort of opt into the program. Uh, and the buyers would potentially be uh, the sellers of petroleum products. Um, I think the actual value of that uh, credit is still something we have yet to, uh, to fully uh, understand, but I do think it will be a, a modest contribution to the incentive to uh, deploy electric charging infrastructure. I don't think it's going to be the dominant factor that's going to drive this market in any way. It's really going to be people wanting the car. They're going to think that the car is cool and they like to be able to not have to go to the, the gas station. Um, this is just another value stream um, that can help facilitate uh, adoption. Anthony Eger, it's a former commissioner of the California Energy Commission. Uh, Diane Wittenberg, are oil companies threatened by electric vehicles? Well, I would say, just using the collaborative as an example, which has been a public-private partnership for the last six months, oil companies have not, uh, that I've seen, been a stopper in any way. And if you take BP and the old Beyond Petroleum, I think that many oil companies sort of have the long-term development perspective that they're in the energy production business, whatever that looks like. Is it possible that they think EV adoption will be so small over such a long period of time that it doesn't really threaten them? So we're going Maybe. from one billion cars to Dan Sperling's book to two billion cars globally. There's enough demand out there for them, and, and electric vehicles are just a... Yeah, is I, that, I mean, I'm a businessman yeah. first and foremost. I focus on the problems that are right in front of me. I mean, they, they are the, ult the... Ultimately, they are the displaced competitor. I mean, the target's on. The tar our, you know, we're targeting <laughs> them, even more at a strategic level, even more than, than the OEMs with whom we already partner because we provide them components to, to make their EVs possible. So you want to replace oil with electricity. That's the yeah. bottom line. I mean, look, I, I mean, again, we're under the banner of climate here, but I come to this from a national security uh, point of view. Um, that's been my most recent experience prior to this, and, uh, and it's all about uh, reduction of oil intensity in our transportation sector because of the externalities, the costs, and, and the externalities associated with our dependence on oil, which is no longer, we are no longer surplus producer it, within our lifetimes. And that's the hangover that we're all getting, that we're all getting over right now. America's just sort of, Americans are just sort of waking up to the fact that Oh, wait a second, we don't sell, you know, I it, mean, it, it's a fungible, you know, commodity. I get that. But, uh, but we bottom line is we need to import, you know, what we need to, to continue to do what we do. Um, so they'd be, uh, they'd be stupid to be ignorant of what we're doing. They're not. Um, they've figured out, they're, they're, I'm sure they're figuring out strategies to address. I think that the effort around uh, fuel cell technology, uh, which was the former front runner in the alternative vehicle arena, was largely informed by uh, the interests and the, evolu the possible evolutions of their business as, as refiners in the downstream uh, arena. Um, but uh, yeah, at some point, you know, they're not going to, to Diane's point, you know, we haven't seen them and, and, uh, yet, but uh, I, I doubt that they're ignorant of what's going on or that they're, they're not doing anything about it. Mark and, we and we certainly did see them in the 90s. I mean, they were pretty visible in fighting the zero emission vehicle mandate at the time. And um, I would suspect one way or another they're, gonna, they're going to uh, have some impact. Um, whether they do it very publicly or not, I don't know. They have a big impact, obviously, uh, within government um, as lobbyists. And certainly, you know, uh, BP is a, is a great example with their Beyond Petroleum. I mean, probably 99% of their business is petroleum, but 99% of their ads are, are touting solar. And there's a disconnect that we just simply need to understand. Uh, last question, please. Um, let's see, I, I have a question about uh, the way the government raises money to fund uh, uh, transportation infrastructure. And right now they seem to do it through a gas tax as, as one of the ways. Sure. Now with the uh, move to elect electric vehicles, um, they won't be recovering anywhere near as much money. And I'm wondering if, what your thoughts are on how that uh, infra infrastructure will be paid for. Will there be a special tax on EV owners or taxing electricity? M uh, mileage ideas, Anthony Eckert? Uh, another topic that was uh, picked up and addressed by the, uh, the collaborative, and I think um, the conclusion was that, yes, eventually uh, these vehicles are going to have to pay their fair share of, of road taxes um, to be able to use the system. Um, I think the actual impact to the collection uh, for road taxes is likely to be negligible um, you know, for the next five plus years. 
so we have some time to figure this out, you know, whether it's um, uh, you know, a per mileage charge of some sort uh, that's, that's taken. Um, I think there's a number of different mechanisms that could be employed uh, and another issue that we do have to deal with and grapple with eventually, but it's not pressing, it's not gonna break the bank of the, uh, the Highway Trust Fund uh, tomorrow.